Citrus TV is on the scene for the basketball preview show, Syracuse men's team, Syracuse women's. Listen, we'll talk about the returners, the new additions, and all you need to know for Adrian Autry, year one and year two for Felicia Leggett Jack. All that and more. The Citrus TV 2023 basketball preview show starts right now. Let's go. Inside the Carmelo K. Anthony Center on the campus of Syracuse University. I'm Jesse Cook, that's Shola Castia Dele, and it's the basketball preview show, which means it's probably the most exciting time of the year because we get to see a first look at the men's and women's teams. Lots of excitement, you know, new era for Syracuse men's basketball, Syracuse women's basketball, year two for Felicia Leggett Jack. There's a lot of excitement here on South Campus, and it's exciting to see. And all that excitement going into this season, but there was a lot of hype around last year. So let's take a look and a listen back to what happened in the 2022 through 23 campaign. It was a rocky start with just the second loss to Colgate of the Bayheim era. The only other one came the year before, and what was then Bayheim's only losing season. They're a lot better than we are right now. Life soon looked up for Syracuse with an upset last second win at Notre Dame, but soon enough after a string of losses, out came the classic Bayheim charm. Another deflating loss for Syracuse. There were still some pretty fun times. To thank this team, 2003 team, for the thrill of my life. But even when Orange looked as good as gold, all hope came crashing down. For Williamson, now Appleby, left wing, Tyree Appleby feeds Williamson, who shoots a right wing three and drains it! I'm 47 years at the helm of SU men's basketball, and he only called it a career. I'm thrilled to be retired. I felt better the last two days than I felt in 47 years. So that's what it was like last year, but there's a lot of changes heading into year one for Adrian Autry. Yeah, let's, let's talk about a lot of those changes. 33 years ago, I arrived at Syracuse University as a young man from Harlem, New York. Adrian Autry will be taking over the position. The atmosphere is quite frankly surreal. A historical three days in March leading to a new era for Syracuse men's basketball. Head coach Adrian Autry introduced to the media the Orange Faithful and the college basketball world. Now, more than seven months on, Autry says this is a very hungry team. One that won't back down. This team that I have right here is, uh, you know, they're competitors. We're not an old team by any stretch of imagination. Um, so I think we'll have a little bit of continuity. In comes a lot of depth, a lot of youth, and a couple of new guys who could pose as huge threats for the rest of the ACC. Front, there's Cleveland for McLeod. A junior transfer with an insane frame and a local product, a sophomore with an excellent freshman campaign looking for some home cooking, what appears to be a reunion of sorts between him and the new head man. Once I entered the transfer portal, I knew uh, where I wanted to go. You know, he knew what he wanted to do. He knew why I was calling and, uh, you know, we got it done pretty easy. A lot going into this season for sure. Hey. Jesse, why don't we talk a little bit about what's changed with this team, some of the key departures. Let's start, why don't we start with Joe Girard? Yeah, it doesn't feel like a lot's changed because you keep all of those freshmen going into their sophomore year, but Joe Girard, a leader over his four years at Syracuse, and he's off to Clemson. He's a guy who also hit threes, but was that locker room presence for this squad, and I think that makes a bigger difference in him on the floor. 
I think overall, this is a net loss. This is somebody who averaged over 16 points per game, six in the ACC last year. But again, sometimes we did notice problems with consistency. Um, I thought that one November stretch was really interesting. 21 points against Northeastern. Then he had 31 against Richmond. And then the final three games after that, St. John's, Bryan, and Illinois, four, five, and zero. When Joe Girard scored, this team won. When he didn't, it wasn't going very well for the Orange. So he's very vital for this team to win games. If he finds a way to be more consistent down in South Carolina, he'll be very lethal, especially playing the conference that he's known for all these years. And someone else from last year's team who was an underrepresented scorer, Jesse Edwards, he ended up in the top 10 among centers in the country in points per game, but he was also such a presence on defense, one of the best blockers in all of college basketball. He was a facilitator for this team, and you mentioned the blocks. 87 block shots last year, first in the conference in his insane frame. West Virginia is going to be incredibly lucky. A little bit of turnover there with Bob Huggins, no longer the coach of West Virginia, but the Big 12 better watch out because WVU is coming for you. <laughs> Yeah, new head coach there, new head coach in Syracuse, and we'll unpack all the Adrian Autry stuff later. But there are some key returners, not just Autry coming from his assistant coaching role, but guys like Judah Mintz, Chris Bell, Malik Brown, Justin Taylor, Quidier Copeland. This is a very deep team when you think about who's coming back. Yeah, let's talk about Judah a little bit. Some had potentially seen him going in the second round of the draft, testing the waters a little bit, decides to come back to SU for his sophomore campaign. With Joe Girard gone, I do think there's a little bit more of a spotlight on Judah Mintz. He started all 32 games last season, just over 16 points per game average. Lots of turnovers though, 77 of those, 59 steals. He's someone who can really drive the paint and finish the basket really well, but we've talked about some of the things that haven't gone well. He became more of a passer as the season went on, but sometimes his unwillingness to spread the rock earlier in the season kind of caused trouble with ball security for Syracuse. Um, one thing that we're actually going to talk to him later about is the jump shot. His jump shot, a lot of people have been talking about him working on his jumper, his mid-range, his three-point shot. Um, but if he's able to do that this season, this offense is going to be absolutely lethal, and he's crucial to that. Yeah, it's an under it's an under thought about part that Judah Mintz is such a great scorer, but there is that issue of ball security. But you need to think about that shooting game. Head coach Autry also said in his presser that Quidier Copeland is someone who's really improved in that venue as well. I always think about him in, in the pit game where he was playing on both sides of the ball, scoring 10 points. Malik Brown was someone who cycled through the starting lineup throughout the season. Justin Taylor showed up as a three-point shooter. There were times when he was hitting three, four long ball shots per game. Yeah, I think one thing that's going to be really interesting for this Orange team, some of the guys that kind of fell out a little bit over the mid part of the season. We talk about Benny Williams. We talk about Chris Bell. Um, Benny is someone who struggled at one point last season. Took that personal day again. Remember against Virginia in that 67-62 loss. There was a seven game stretch last season where he didn't score more than four points in the game. The same goes for his rebounds as well. Malik Brown, we talked about him a little bit, replaced him in the lineup for a while and he began to really pick it up towards the end. Last three games Malik Brown had with 30 or more minutes, 24 points, nine rebounds, 11 points, eight rebounds, and 18 points, 11 rebounds. So he's someone you're hoping takes it up a step and I'm talking about Benny here because, again, I think a lot of these, these things, a lot of these players were kind of thrown into the fire last year. Um, it's interesting. Judah Mintz was talking about how Adrian Autry is a little bit more hands-on. I think it's going to be good for a lot of these young guys because there is a little bit of a lack of a veteran presence. Talked about Benny Williams a little bit there. I did have a brief discussion with him, and he said the thing he's most excited about for this season is getting back on the floor. Now, he didn't specify if that meant more minutes or one thing in particular, but a lot of these guys are just excited to get into the season, Judah Mintz especially. Yeah, and Judah, you know, he's just so good being able to drive the paint. Again, we've talked about some of the things he needs to fix, that jump shot, but I think it's coming with time. He's talked about it. It's something he's very aware of. It's something that... This team is very aware of, but his ability to facilitate the offense for this team is going to lead to incredible things, I think. And let's take a look into how Judah has developed and more into his character as a leader on this team. If you give me one word to describe Judah Mintz's play style, what would that word be? Uh, relentless or aggressive. Excited. I say unpredictable. Flashy. Last season, Judah Mintz averaged over 16 points per game for Syracuse and led the ACC in steals. That performance led to the Maryland native exploring the possibility of entering the NBA draft. Really, just, just trying to make it out. I was trying to make it to the NBA. I, I 
I was talking to Raiden and Coach Lee Mack a lot. Probably weekly, I was saying. I was really just focused on what I mean. But on May 31st, what Orange fans hoped for became true. Mintz was returning for a second year. SU's projected starting point guard, as well as his coaches and teammates, are excited that he's back. Yeah, I mean, we don't want to just make the tournament. But, uh, we want to From a Syracuse standpoint, that's what I came here. That's what everybody here is trying to do. I think the one thing um, that everyone will see is uh, in the way we play right now is um, how disruptive he can be on the defensive end of the side of the ball, but uh, he's improved overall. Yeah, my relationship with him is, is great. You know, we've been competitors for a long time, and now we're finally teammates, and we're just looking to push each other because we know what we can offer for this team. So, he's, he's a dog. He's a dog. He's, he's a go-getter. Um, he gets after you on the defensive end, and at the same time, he can do it, do it all on the offensive end. So. While Mintz's long-term goal may be the NBA, his focus is simple. Get Syracuse back to the NCAA tournament and back on the path to being one of the best teams in the country. From outside the Mellow Center, I'm Liam Griffin, Citrus TV. We are now joined by Syracuse men's basketball point guard, Judah Mintz. Judah, thank you for joining us today. No problem. Hey, <laughs> real quick here, how are you feeling going into this new campaign? I know it's a new era for the team. How are you feeling? Your initial thoughts? Uh, I mean, excited would be an honest thing, to be honest. We got a, a, a new group of guys, a new, new head of leadership. I can't wait to, to see what we can do this year. Yeah, lots of anticipation for sure. You mentioned new leadership. I know you've worked with new head coach Adrian Autry in the past. He's no stranger to the staff. Um, is there anything that he's noticed? Um, is there anything that's different going into this year in terms of how he's running the show, how he's running practice? Uh, I mean, I, I would say just his whole style of coaching. Uh, it's, he, he really treats us uh, he just treats us differently than you know, Coach Beheim. He, he's more hands-on, I would say. Just a, a, a fresher dude, a younger person, I would say. And it, it's just trickled down to the assistants and everybody that's in the program. Yeah. Let, let's talk about you a little bit, right? You had a pretty impressive freshman campaign. Um, something a lot of people mentioned over the offseason is your jump shot. How have you worked on that? And is it more so a, a mid-range type thing you worked on, a three-pointer you've worked on, or both? Uh, I mean, I would say three-pointer I worked on. For the majority of the time this summer, but I mean, I've I worked on my entire game, but I made a, a point of emphasis on that. Just being able to hit that shot as a point guard, uh, I think will open up a lot of things for me and my teammates. Right, and on that note, the point point guard. One thing I saw over the course of your freshman season, your passing ability really started to improve as the season went on. How? more comfortable are you in your sophomore campaign now as the facilitator, the floor general? Uh, I mean, I'm used to it now. Uh, last year I was my first year playing point guard. Changing your position, uh, your freshman year of college, uh, it's going to have its ups and downs. I feel like I'm a lot more mature uh, as a player, as a person. Uh, I've been watching a lot of film every single day, so I'm, I'm real comfortable with uh, playing the position I had to this year. Yeah, um, back on the specific real quick, turnovers. You know, that's something that happened down the stretch in a lot of late games and whatnot for this team, for you. Um, it, what's the key for ball security as you kind of grow into your sophomore year? Uh, I mean, I would really say just just learning from your mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, just pushing forward, learning from your mistakes. But but also having, having sets and having uh, things uh, specific plays and sets that you trust that to go to at the end of games. I think a lot of times there's a lot of confusion of what we really want to do. It might it might go to me every time, but the, the actual play and, and what we really need to accomplish uh, might have might have got lost when we actually ran the play. So I would say really have a discipline as well. This is, like you've said, this is an exciting season. It's a new era. Um, how has the practice chemistry been with not only some of the returning players, but some of these new guys, J.J. Starling, you know, the Baldensville native, uh, Naheem McLeod, Chance Westry. How are you guys gelling on the practice floor? Uh, I mean, it's been fun. Uh, it's been intense. Uh, we go at it every day in practice. I might be on quad team for, for one drill, and the next time uh, I'm going against them, we're going at it. It's like never boys. So, but at the same time, we come together at the end of practice uh, every time and make sure that we know we still play. And, and that's what I'm for, for a team now and, and moving forward because 
So we're going to have our ups and downs during the season. For sure. How big is that identity of family? Uh, I mean, we preach every day. I tell them, I tell the guys in the family every day before, before we head out of the facility. Syracuse is, is built on family. Our program has always been about, about family. You see, we got three guys on our staff that all play here. Uh, the head coach now also play here. So it's, it's always been about family. That's one of the reasons why I came here. And we, we're just going to continue with Coach Van Holiday down for us. Yeah. Um, one thing I want to ask too leadership. You know, you're someone who came in as a freshman. Got a boatload of playing time, really led the floor for this team. Have you started to become more of a vocal leader on this team, or are there who are you relying on to kind of set the tone? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I've definitely become more of a vocal leader uh, this year. Um, just knowing my role, uh, knowing what the team is going to need from me. Uh, we lost two seniors, well, actually more than that, but two starting seniors last year that, that carried a lot of load for us. Uh, obviously, I knew I was going to have to come back. One of the only players that has really been in the fire here at Q's and, and, and really just talk about and be able to, to put my opinion on what I learned last year. So. Yeah, and that's something Coach Autry talked about a lot. You know, the fact that this team is coming back deeper than last year, but also losing some of that veteran presence as well. We got a lot of young guys on this team. Final two questions here. Everybody wants to make the tournament, obviously. What is a realistic expectation for where we could see this team this season? Uh, I mean, to be honest, I feel like we have the talent uh, and we have the leadership to be able to beat any team uh, that we play. Obviously, you don't know where we're going to really end up until you really get a feel of what we're doing at court. But right now, I feel like we're going to be everybody to go up there. Last question here. Give me a sales pitch. Give the fans a sales pitch. One word to describe why fans should trust in this team this year. We're hungry. It's a group of, of guys that a lot of us have been doubted, either last year or, or previously in our careers. A lot of guys that have a lot of talent, a lot of potential, but haven't been able to show it, no matter what the situation was. So we're hungry. We're focused. Hungry dogs run faster as a Philly guy. Love that word. <laughs> Judah Vince, thank you so much. We'll be right back on our Citrus TV basketball preview show. Center. Welcome back to the Citrus TV Basketball Preview Show. Chile Casiadele, Jesse Cook. Jesse, again, very exciting time. Yeah, not just players returning like we talked about earlier, but some new additions. You got J.J. Starling, guys like Naeem McLeod, but we're not the best guys to talk about that because there are some guys waiting around in the Citrus TV studio. Gentlemen, what are you most excited about with this new class of talent? Thanks, guys. Let's start with Chance Westray. A little bit of an unknown. Didn't play a whole lot in Auburn at, in games that matter most and suffered through a couple injury issues. But what we do know is that he's a really versatile player and can facilitate at a really high level. And what I mean by that is that he can get to the basket 
at will. Let's take a look at a few plays from his freshman year at Auburn that illustrate that ability. Able to use screens, get to the basket, finish through contact in a variety of ways. And with his size at 6'5", 6'6", can finish over smaller guards in and around the paint. That's going to be huge for Syracuse this season, is playing versatile. That's what Adrian Autry wants. But not only that, he wants to play with pace. And Westry offers that as well. Here are a few more plays that show his ability to finish over smaller guys and then force turnovers and do things in and around the painted area. You see his ability on those short jump shots and then finding his teammates down low for easy layups and dunks. His long arms are a huge, huge impact on defense and he can make plays in and around the perimeter. He's going to be finding a lot of Syracuse players down low, including a new big man. Just like that seminal spear behind me, Naheem McLeod is ready to ignite. McLeod spent two seasons with Florida State men's basketball, and in his sophomore campaign, he made just 11 starts in 28 appearances. However, it was on this campus in Tallahassee where McLeod made a splash. The big man had a career-high 16 points and 8 rebounds in 26 minutes. All three of those numbers career highs and a loss against Syracuse. Now, McLeod in the spring picked up the phone, he hit the transfer portal, and he traded this warm campus for this cooler one. It, significantly cooler, if I could say so myself. Syracuse head man Adrian Autry is ready for McLeod's fire to spark this program. A, a lot of times when you, you have someone at that size, you know, you, you question, can they change ends of the floor? You question their mobility laterally. He, he, he can do all that very well. We'll have to wait a little while until Naheem McLeod walks into those JMA wireless dome doors for the first time as an orange as you host New Hampshire on November 6th in the season opener. But until then, let's send things over to Jack Gordon, who has another transfer that hopes to make a huge impact. Well, right now it looks like this team has more guards than Shawshank. You can add Kyle Cuff Jr. to that list. The Kansas transfer only played two games for the Jayhawks in his freshman season and wanted a new opportunity. Syracuse provides a chance for the six foot two guard to play meaningful minutes off the bench. Cuff's last season of action was two years ago at Blair Academy in New Jersey. He grew up in Harlem, New York, just about 20 minutes away from where his father played at St. John's from 2001 to 2004. Cuff opted to play his high school ball for a team that's produced NBA players like Luol Deng and Charlie Villanueva. The New Yorker earned a four-star rating and actually attended Syracuse basketball's elite camp back in 2019. He formed a relationship with head coach Adrian Autry that eventually paid off for the Qs. But before heading to Central New York, he played just one year at Kansas. As a freshman, Cuff played those first two games for the Jayhawks then tore his MCL and PCL in practice and missed the rest of the national championship season. After transferring to Syracuse, Cuff was actually injured again this summer. He broke his hand in June, but is back and healthy again, ready for game one. Well, Jack, certainly will be fun to watch Cuff go at it this season. You mentioned lots of guards for this year's Syracuse men's basketball team. One of the guys we can't forget to mention, J.J. Starling, one of the top transfers in last year's class. Before he was a McDonald's All-American, though, he got his career started right here in Baldwinsville, New York, more specifically right behind me at Baldwinsville High School. And just a bit ago, I had a chance to talk with athletic director Chris Campolita. Campolita has watched J.J. Starling grow up basically since middle school, his progression throughout middle school and high school. But he talked about he knows the talent level of Starling, but he told me that it's his character off the court that really matters the most. And, and you look at this, this past summer, um, him coming back to Syracuse, you saw, you know, the, the tweets are now with X. There was, uh, he was at Liverpool's basketball camp with Coach Blackwell. The next week he was at FM at their basketball camp. He was at our basketball camp the week after that. And he gives his time. Again, you don't have to do that, but it's something that he wants to do and understands that. Kids do look up to him and that's a, it's a burden to an extent. And he knows that and he understands that, you know, he can be a positive role model, you know, for these kids. So there's still that, that connection and now having him was, you know, kind of, it kind of came full circle and there was definitely, you could feel the excitement and, you know, in the school and in and, and the, and the community as well. It's clear to see that Starling returning home is not just impacting the average Q's fan, but people right here in Baldwinsville, New York. 
That's a little bit about who J.J. Starling is as a person. Let's go back in the studio with Ben Spector, who has more about the talent and athleticism of the former five-star. J.J. Starling, he's got the story. The guard is returning home. But what kind of player is Syracuse getting? Well, SU is getting a fast player for sure, but this is a guy that likes to create and make big plays in big moments. Let's take a look at this play against Syracuse. J.J. Starling on in the corner, gets the pass, makes a tomahawk dunk. This is unbelievable. I need to see another view of this because J.J. Starling drove to the basket, dodged Jesse Edwards, a great defender, transferred to West Virginia, dunks over Chris Bell, was all over the place. It shows his athleticism. This is why he was a five-star recruit, attacking the rim, creating plays, showing that athleticism at only six foot four. He creates a good running mate to, to move the pace with Judah Mintz in the backcourt, but he also provides space as seen in this play you're about to see against Marquette. Interconference matchup, Big East against ACC. J.J. Starling step back three, shows his range, only shot 30% from deep that last season, but him next to Judah Mintz gives him that space. This could be a running gun backcourt in the ACC that not a lot of people are talking about right now. J.J. Starling, remember the name. When we come back on the 2023 Citrus TV Basketball Preview Show, this guy's got an interview with the head man, an exclusive one with Syracuse men's basketball head coach, new head coach, Adrian Autry. All that and more when we come right back. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm, just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Leaving hot coals improperly extinguished can cause a wildfire. Hey guys, it's smoky. It looks as if smoking is going to use the drown, stir, drown, and feel technique. After the first drown, a good start. Next, another drink. Next, and next, finally, next, a close feel. Is it cool? cool? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Smokey, catch. Oh, my bad, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. Citrus TV's basketball preview show coming back at you. Jesse Cook, you might recognize this guy, new head coach of the Syracuse Orange men's basketball team, Adrian Autry. Are you used to that title yet? I'm getting used to it. It's taking some time, but I'm getting used to it. I had, had the summertime to get used to it. So you're going into year one as head coach. Do you have anything that you're most excited for to see in the new year? I mean, obviously, uh, we, we put the work in and we still got work to do. But uh, I always love basketball season. I love competing. I'm just excited for the season uh, to, to see you know, how we attack this season, you know, and uh, so I look forward to it. Got a few newcomers, but before we get to them, a lot of returners. Judah Mintz, a big one, Chris Bell, Benny Williams. Let's talk about Judah first. What does he bring to the table? I mean, you're talking about a guy that can uh, control the game, uh, scoring the basketball, creating shots for others. Obviously, this year, I think, you know, last year, he let us in steals and won the top steal leader. And you know, the defensive end, he sets the tone for us. And what was it like with that process of him deciding whether or not he would come back to Syracuse? Well, when I got the phone call and he told me that he was uh, coming back, obviously, I was really excited. I jumped up, jumped up, ran around the house a little bit. Um, but it, it was exciting. And obviously, he was. You know, wearing his options, and he had options, and he chose to, camp, chose to come back and play here so, and play for me, so I was obviously excited. No Joe Girard, no Jesse Edwards, two of the seniors from last year. Who are you looking to individually to step up in that leadership role? Obviously, I think Judah and JJ, um, Benny Williams, you know, Naheem McLeod, you know, guys that have experience that have played um, consistently in the ACC. Those are the guys that typically have, have the locker room and that you look towards to, to lead the charge. And Naeem is no everyday 7-4. He is a unique player. He is. You know, when you think about 7-4, you think about guys that, you know, you question their mobility, their agility, things like that. He checks the boxes on all of those. Um, so, uh, you know, we were 
He's very, very, very happy to have him come be a part of this program, and I think he's going to have a huge impact for us. And where do you see his role coming in key? Because he only averaged, what, 12 minutes per game over his first two years at Florida State. How can he expand his role? I think, you know, the playing time will be there for him this year to be able to showcase what he can do. You know, he's, he can finish around the room. He has nice touches. But I think the biggest uh, impact that he can have for us is on the defensive end. On that side of the ball, I think he can block shots and rebound. And I remember at the end of last season, when I heard that Adrian Autry was going to be the new head coach of the Orange, the first thing I thought of was your recruiting ability. Guys like Jeremy Grant, Tyler Ennis. How does that role change for you as a head coach? It, it doesn't. You know, I still um, work uh, in recruiting as if I'm still an assistant coach. Um, I think that's the mentality that we have as staff. Um, but it's, it's been good. You know, we've been able to have some success, and I think we're putting a lot of momentum going forward. So it, it's exciting. It's Coach Autry, Jesse Cook, Citrus TV Basketball Preview Show. So now as the head coach, has your relationship with the players on a personal level changed at all? Oh, yes, absolutely. You know, I was the guy that they used to, they used to share their complaints to. Now I'm the guy that they're complaining about. So, <laughs> but no, we've uh, we, we spent a lot of time together with our players. Um, obviously, they do change when my role changed, but um, I think they've all strengthened. I think our communication has been really good. And you said this a couple times. Now that you're the head coach, Elephant in the room, the two-three zone. Is it something you use a lot, a little, or not at all? I'm going to use the two-three zone. Um, I, again, I think every every team has to have different defenses, and obviously we need two-three. We've had a lot of success with it, so I will be, I will use the two-three zone. A couple more questions for you. You start out with preseason non-conference play, but the ACC is an ever-changing landscape. What do you think makes it different this season than in previous years? I think this season, um, when we talk about our transfer portal that's really in full effect now, obviously being in the league, I think this year our, our teams feel like everyone either returns a starter or have acquired starters. So I think you have a lot of experience in our league this year, and our, and our league is always tough, but I think it'll be you know, one of the best leagues in the country this year. And my last question for you, your nickname is Red. Where does that come from? Well, when I was younger, I had hair. Now I don't, so uh, typically, you know, for my hair, I have you know, red hair and things like that, but you guys don't get a chance to see that anymore. Now all you see is gray when it goes in. <laughs> well, I, I like the bald look. Do you like the bald look? I've been, I've, you know, when I was in college, I, I had the bald look. And then when I got out of college, I let my hair grow in a little bit. Now I'm back to the bald look, not by choice, though. Are we ever going to gonna see you try out some, some different things with the bald look this season? Uh, you know, I don't know if I would. I mean, I might try to let it grow, and I just don't have time. It doesn't grow all the way in no more anyway. <laughs> so apart from hair, apart from the team as a whole, if you're talking to Syracuse fans, last question here, what is your one word to get them excited for this season? I think you're going to see a fast-paced team. So a fast-paced Syracuse team. That's head coach Adrian Autry in his first year at the head of the Syracuse program. I'm Jesse Cook, the Citrus TV Basketball Preview Show. will be back in a bit. Here's to the straggly ones, the first ones. But hey, I look good with this ones. The black, brown, red, and gray ones. The itchy ones. The ones grown by dad. The ones grown for dad. The I nearly didn't do it this year ones. And the absolutely filthy ones. They all raise awareness, raise funds, start conversations, and save lives. Because whatever you grow will save a bro. Learn more at Movember.com. Most party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul.
here at the Mellow Center. It's our Citrus TV basketball preview show. Hey, let's talk a little bit about the women's basketball team now. Yeah, this is a team that showed a lot of promise last year, making the WNIT, almost putting in a bid for the NCAA tournament. We've got someone special here to talk to us, Carson Fowler, the women's basketball beat reporter. Question number one, what can we expect going into this new year? Well, from the conversations that I had with Syracuse women's basketball players, they all said, you know, it's March Madness. A lot of these, a lot of these girls want to get to the big dance. A lot of them have been to the big dance. A lot of those players coming from Buffalo in 2021. FLJ squad won the MAC championship, earned the automatic qualifying bid to March Madness in 2021. I think that's what we're. That's what this team is chasing right now. Carson, I think one thing that was really interesting throughout the course of today when we were talking to some of these players. Defense, that seems to be something they've stressed over the offseason. What have you seen over the course of the offseason, over the course of last season, in terms of how this team's working to improve that? Well, there's a lot of new additions, a lot of new, you know, a lot of new faces on this squad. I'm really excited. God, I gotta get her name it. Mariliana Trientafili, 6'5 freshman from Greece, gonna play center. Also got a transfer from Michigan and Isabel Vergeau, Anderson Vergeau's niece. You know, obviously the departure of Dariana Lewis, but I think Kyra Wood will also step up and make a big impact on this team. The word that was used today from the players that I talked to, details. This is a very detail-oriented team. FLJ has, you know, she's ingrained that word into this team. They want to make sure that, you know, they finished second last, second last in the AC last year in de defensive efficiency. They want to make sure that is not, that is not the case here in 2023, 2024. So they're sweating the small stuff. But going into like this Jared season, May said. exactly, <laughs> former on the bench Citrus TV anchor. Uh, but going into this season, you mentioned transfers like Vera Zhao, and on that defensive end, what the team can do to improve. What do you think this transfer class as a whole brings to the program? I think it's defense. I think you know you got a lot more size this year. Obviously, a very short team last year. That's a different story in 2023, 2024. Dominique Camp, someone to keep your eye on. Two and a half steals, all MAC defensive team in 2023 with Akron. She comes to Buff. She went to started in Buffalo, excuse me, with FLJ. Decided to join the Orange, mostly due to FLJ. Such a huge reason in her choice here. I expect her to make a huge impact on this team. I'm. I'm really excited. I think we might see a little more zone looks as well, considering the height advantages this team has compared to last season. Carson, let, let's run through last season a little bit, give a little brief summation. You know, this is a team that went 20 and 13, 9 and 9 in conference play. They did beat the ranked UNC team last year. That was probably one of the highlight ones of the season. But again, crushed in the ACC tournament by NC State. And we talk about the WNIT season ending there with that third round loss to Columbia. What is the logical progression for this team to get better? compared to the previous season? I think it's going to start in the non-conference. They've got a couple good tests, you know, in that later portion of November. Got Thanksgiving South Point shootout. They'll play Iowa State, Northern Iowa. Before that game, they're on the road at Maryland. That's going to be a ranked matchup. Um, they also play, what is it, Alabama in the ACC, SEC Challenge. I think all those games are going to be really good tests for this team to distinguish if they're going to be in that upper echelon of the ACC, especially when it comes to Selection Sunday come March. And let's talk those team leaders. So DeAsia Fair is back for another year. She's right near the top of the nation. She's in one of those top groups when it comes to career scoring among active players. What does she bring in an extra year? Second year in the Orange Room from her fifth year of college basketball. She's their senior leader. She was elected captain of this team alongside Dominique Camp and Kyra Wood. Second leading scorer in the ACC, first team all ACC last, all, all MAC and all ACC defensive teams. I mean, the accolades just go on and on. But I think what she really wants to be remembered for is, you know, her leadership abilities, but also the respect she has for her coaches, her teammates. She told me that in our interview. I expect big things from DH Fair once again, like you said, in the upper echelon, that top tier, that S tier of collegiate basketball players on the women's side, DH Fair is obviously definitely one of them. Yeah, and you know, Carson, you're here, you were there, you've been everywhere today. So let's listen to what Carson and DH Fair had to say. Jesse Choi, thanks guys. I'm sitting down with star point guard DH Fair. I'm Carson Fowler, your Syracuse women's basketball B reporter. Diesha, you're just about two weeks removed coming back from Poland. How was that experience playing for Team USA in 3-2 basketball? It was different, and it showed me that you always have to lead no matter what, no matter how many players are on the floor and how many are not on the floor. It just showed me that there are many opportunities available for me, and it's just up to me to you know, go and take it. 
Deja Abish, you named a captain of this team in 2023 and 2024. What does it mean to you to be recognized by your teammates, your peers, your coaches as one of the leaders on this role on this team? It means that they respect me, one, and they see something in me that others may not. You know, there may be outsiders looking in that know nothing about me and may not name me as a captain or, you know, you know how the media or whatever the case may be may try to perceive you. But when your family, your sisters and your staff believe in you, that's something you, you know, you take pride in. Deja, obviously you touched on it earlier, your relationship with Coach Jack. What does she mean to you as a role model, as your coach, as a, you know, this team, this family? What does she mean to you? She means the world to me, you know. And, I mean, with the circumstances being what they are, it's a, it's a sensitive, another sensitive topic for me right now. But, I mean, I refer to her all the time as my superwoman, but she just found that out. Or she's just going to find out when, when she does. And, you know, she's my superwoman, basically. I saw that on your, your Twitter today, that you, my superwoman will be okay. So yeah. I saw that on Twitter. Um, Tisha, obviously I'm sure you have goals this season in your last year of college basketball. What are you chasing? What is this, what is this team chasing? We're chasing, if not an ACC uh, championship, an uh, NCAA championship. That's always the goal. But uh, the ultimate goal is to get better, you know, get better in your craft, get better as a unit, and, you know, see where that takes us. Jisha, something your teammates have kind of alluded to is the word details, you know, mm -hmm. you know, ingraining yourself in details, being, going at it every week and just, you know, the nitty gritty of it. What is, how is, what has Coach Jack's coaching style been like? I mean, what kind of, what does she, how does she motivate you? Her passion, you know, her passion is one that'll never be matched or one that I've never seen in any other coach or any person rather when it comes to this game. And it's just passion, energy, like your effort, your fight. What are you what are you going to do? How are you going to respond when it gets tough? And are you gonna be the best you can be? It's no sense in doing it if you're not gonna put forth the right effort or the right energy. So for for me and how she, you know, gets us going or how we feed off of her, it's her energy, her passion. Deisha, Dominique Camp, obviously you played with her in 2021. She went to Akron. Now she's in the orange uniform. What does it mean to you to play with your former teammate here in Syracuse? It, it's a, almost like unreal. Who would have thought, <laughs> you know, who would have thought we didn't end up back playing together and we did some we did some stuff, like on the court, I mean, like we, we got it done. And I feel like with it being both of our fifth year and last year, you know, last ride, it's going to mean more. I know it means, means something now, but it's going to mean more and it's going to feel different once November gets here. So, Deisha, you obviously you mentioned your time with her in Buffalo and whatnot. That team in 2021 won the MAC championship. I'm sure you've got a ring to show for it. Yeah. You went to the NCAA tournament, getting that automatic qualifying bid. What would it mean to you, your team, FLJ, your entire staff, getting back to the big dance in 2024? It would mean everything, especially for me. Like, you know, I've only been to the dance one time and I played four years, so to get it back there as my fifth year and to end it, it would mean it would mean everything to just, you know, knock a goal off the chart and hopefully make a deep run, if not win it all. You know, you've accomplished so much in college basketball at Buffalo, here in Syracuse. Yeah. I mean we could talk about scoring, we could talk about your great def defensive skills, but what, what do you really hope to be remembered for, you know, wh whether it's here at Buffalo or just in college basketball in general? I hope to leave the legacy of that is, you know, heart over height. You know, I've always been doubted because of how small I am. And I've always, you know, I wouldn't say got picked last or I've been looked over. I'd say that. But I also say that, you know, my dreams or my goals, they may have been delayed at some point, but they will never be denied. So heart over height is what it is for me. and. Nobody can stop me but me. Nobody can stop me but me. I like that. Mm -hmm. Guys, that was Deisha Fair, star point guard for Syracuse Women's Basketball. I'm Carson Fowler, your Syracuse Women's Basketball beat reporter. Jesse Chile, we'll throw it back to you guys. Carson, Deisha, thank you so much. We'll see more of Carson Fowler next on the Basketball Preview Show. He sat down earlier with Georgia Woolley. Jason, let's go see your room.
those are their friends. Look! Basketball preview show carries on here on Citrus TV. That's Chillicothe Adele. I'm Jesse Cook. We just talked to Carson Fowler, and he talked to DeAsia Fair, one of the Buffalo transfers that came in last season. Well, why not bring in another former Bull with Georgia Woolley? Carson sat down with her earlier. Jesse, Chile, thank you. Talking with Georgia Woolley here, star guard for Syracuse Women's Basketball. I'm Carson Fowler, Syracuse Women's Basketball beat reporter. Georgia, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. We'll, you know, we'll get right into this. Mm -hmm. Georgia, you're the second leading scorer on the on this team last year. You're back now. What does that mean to you? Still being coached under FLJ. Um, it's great. I love Coach Jack. So it's exciting to be back another year. Great team. A lot of the same people, but a, gr a, a lot of also good newcomers coming in. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So. Obviously, you hail from Australia. Mm -hmm. Newcomer for you guys, Sophie Burrows. You saw you talking to her earlier. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to have another uh, Australian kid on the team? It's good having another Aussie bouncing that Aussie <laughs> slang off each other. Getting my accent back a little because it's, it's been going a little, but it's, it's good to have another Aussie around for sure. I can understand that being in Syracuse, New York. Yes. So, <laughs> We talked about FLJ. You followed her from Buffalo to Syracuse. Just tell me a little bit about what she means to you, you know, maybe as a role model, as a coach, you know, as family to you. Like you said, role model, family, coach. Um, I came to America, I came to Buffalo to play for Coach Jack, so being able to continue that here in Syracuse is just a blessing. She, She's just, she's fantastic. So just being able to play for her and being around her each and every day, you learn lessons on and off the court. Georgia, you had a terrific season last year. What are you hoping to gain this year? Where do you want to see your game elevate? Yeah, like you said, I just want to keep building from last year and into this year. Um, build more of myself to be able to help the team and uh, progress through this ACC and win an ACC championship's the ultimate goal. Absolutely. So you mentioned some of the newcomers on this team. What has the chemistry been like? Have you guys been meshing well? Obviously, you had a couple people leave, a couple people come now. What's, what's it been like so far in practice in the offseason? It's been really good. Um, I think that these newcomers are really exciting. They really fit into the, um, the standards and the type of culture we want to have here at Syracuse on women's basketball. So I think that each and every one of them exemplify that, and it's just exciting to have them. You mentioned that culture. What, what is that culture you guys are building here in, for Syracuse women's basketball? Mm -hmm. It's a family. It's a family, and that's what it is. And peop uh, people that gel on the court, gel off the court, it's only going to show better on the court. So I feel like if we continue to do that, we're just going to be... It's exciting. So, Georgia, you guys were obviously probably one of the smaller teams in the ACC last season. You bring in some serious height this year. We're in to trip. Trent to fall. God, I'm Trent to so Philly. Trent to Philly. Thank yep. you. And uh, obviously, Sophie Burrows, some other mm -hmm. bigs. How, how, how is your defense going to look differently this year? I think you guys finished second to last mm -hmm. in the ACC and defense last year. Have you been working on things in the offseason to, you know, maybe get more in that middle range, even play some really serious defense in the ACC? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that defense really has to be our focus this year. Being second to last was not um, acceptable for who we want to be in uh, this competition, in this league, in the whole NCAA. So I think that we've put a big focus on that in this preseason and throughout the summer. So it's going to be exciting to see how our defense is this year. Georgia, a couple good non-conference tests for you guys in, you know, coming up pretty soon, Maryland, Alabama, Iowa State. How are you guys prepping for those games? Um, yeah, just locking in every single day. Those are going to be really great games leading us into the ACC. So I think that having those games on our schedule this year is going to be exciting, and I'm really looking forward to it. How do you think those games are going to help you prep for what is probably going to be a gauntlet ACC schedule. A lot of real, it's a really good league this year, as yeah. it normally is. Yeah, like you said, the ACC is a great league. Um, so playing those teams is going to have us at that level and uh, get us ready. As soon as we play that first ACC game, we're going to be ready to go. So I think it's exciting. Totally, totally. Georgia, obviously, you came with FLJ in 2021. You were a part of that team that went to the MAC championship, won the MAC championship, made it to March Madness, mm -hmm. got the automatic qualifying bid. What would it mean to you in 2024? Obviously, you guys you just missed the tournament last season. What would it mean to you guys to get there this season? Yeah, that's the goal. Go as far as we can in that tournament. Um, yeah, NCAA tournament is definitely where we see ourselves this year. So I think that that's something that fans, everyone can be excited to see this year for sure. Georgia, last question for you before we let you go. Mm -hmm. Dominique Camp coming from Akron, your yeah. former teammate. How does it feel to be back on the court with her? No, it's great. I love Dom. Uh, she's great. She's going to find you. She's going to find you. If you're open. You're not open. 
she's going to find you and you're somehow going to be open. So Dom is really exciting to play with and it's just good to have her back around. Um, so it's exciting, yeah, for sure. So she obviously voted a captain mm -hmm. of the squad this year. What does that mean to you? How do you guys recognize her as a leader, you know, just transferring just one year removed? Mm -hmm. um, seeing Dom just from Buffalo until now, she's grown so much as a person and as a player and um, she deserves to be a captain on this team and she's leading us by example, off the court, on the court, everything. So um, it's exciting to have her around for sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. This has been Georgia Woolley with Syracuse Women's Basketball. I'm Carson Fowler, Syracuse Women's Basketball beat reporter. Throw it back to you guys, Jesse Chile. Thanks. Next on the Basketball Preview Show, we'll break down what's going into this season for both the men's and the women's rosters as we wrap up the show from the Carmelo K. Anthony Center. Wrapping up shop here on the 2023 Citrus TV Basketball Preview Show. Here from the Mellow Center, still, Chile Casiadele, Jesse Cook. Listen, it's, again, a time of change, but still in a very exciting time for both Syracuse men's basketball and Syracuse women's basketball. Let's start with the women, shall we? That's right. This women's team took it far last year, going to the third round of the WNIT. Almost made it to the NCAA tournament, but another year of Coach Leggett Jack, another year of DeAsia Fair, Georgia Woolley, another year building that chemistry. I think it's really promising for this squad. So let's get right into it. Who's your starting five for this year, July? Listen, it's going to be really interesting. I am going, of course, DeAsia Fair to start off. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Nearly 20 points per game last season. Started all 33 games. Remember that nasty 36-point performance against UVA she had last season? Absolutely lights out. Can shoot the ball. Can facilitate the offense really well. And as as is the case with so many of the players on this team, they know Coach Jack, they know her system, they know how to play in that system, and they know the bond that they have. Two, Georgia Woolley, about 13 points per game last season. A 30-point performance against Columbia, if you remember. She was second on the team last year in total points in 12 consecutive games, finishing the season in double digits. So she'll continue to shoot out the lights at the two. Let's go to so forward. Kyra Wood, this may throw you off a little bit. Don't sleep on her, all right? Shot 52%, over 52% from the field, just up from over 39% the year before. And guess what? Her average in minutes only went up by four minutes. She can be very aggressive on defense, too. It was interesting taking a look at some of her stats from Temple. Second on the team in blocks, 29 and 21-22, can take the ball away and be a big presence at the four. Are you just saying that because you're from Philadelphia and she went to Temple? I may be a little bit biased, okay? But listen, let's finish out here. Kennedy Perkins and Elena Rice, listen, Perkins, someone who didn't get that many points, but she turn, turned out to be very reliable off the bench towards the season. Saw increased playing time towards the end. FLJ really liked her power and energy. Appeared in 23 games last season, but I think the small sample size can tell you a lot. Let's take a look at free throw, or sh rather shooting percentages. Three-point percentage, nearly 44.5%, and her free throw percentage, or field percentage, 54.5%. Absolutely amazing stuff from her. I expect big things. Elena Rice, again, she's someone who really started towards the end of the season. 18 points against Virginia last year, already a starter. Seven double-figure performances last season. She'll be one who's ready. She's someone who can really shoot that outside corner three. Yeah. And I think my starting five is pretty much similar to yours. DeAsia Fair is a no-brainer. She's the leader of this team. Georgia Woolley emerged as a leader as well. Both of them coming from Buffalo. Woolley really having a great performance in the WNIT, especially that Columbia game where she scored on three consecutive drives near the end of that stretch. 
when you look at the other positions like forwards, I also think you have to go with Kyra Wood. She's someone who's shown up on defense, and she was named a captain as a sophomore in her first year with the program after transferring in with Temple. Her teammates trust her. The coaching staff trusts her as well. This is a team that has cycled through with its starting five a bunch of times through last season, trying new combinations, and that's why I think Kennedy Perkins also finds her way in there as well. She earned a lot of starts as a freshman near the end of the regular season, and I'd like to see them go to that transfer portal and use Isabel Verajao at the center. There was no set center on this team last yes. season. Dariana Lewis was listed as just a forward. Verajao is a center. She is big, and she knows how to play in the paint. She started out with Michigan, a great women's basketball program. I think she's a really promising player for this squad. Good point. Yeah, why don't we switch over back to the men's game for a little bit. Start off with our starting lineups, our starting five. Jesse, why don't you go first on this one? Judah Mintz. Mm. It's pretty easy pretty idea. Fun. Started <laughs> all the time last season, and Mintz was the only player from last year's squad that's returning this year who was top 10 in the ACC in points per game. The only other player who's now on the orange who was in the top 50 in the conference, J.J. Starling. He's going out there as well. I expect to see Malik Brown a lot down low. He was someone who quietly made his way into the starting lineup, and I think that Benny Williams is still a staple for this roster. There was a lot of drama last year. I talked to him. He said there's no more drama. He's there to play. He's there to be a great teammate. He's there to be a member of this team. And down low, I think you have to go with the seven foot four Naeem McLeod. Coach Autry said that he is someone who's dynamic on both sides of the ball. He can sprint up and down the floor. Sure, he averaged just about 12 minutes per game across his first two years at Florida State. Well, when you go into your junior year, you expect to be in a bigger role. Definitely. Listen, my starting five here. No surprise, Judah Mintz at the one. We saw what he could do last no year. No surprise at all. And guess what? A lot of the season hangs on him and how he improves. The ball handling, the jump shot. We talked about the turnovers over. Uh, we talked about his lack of a jump shot. I think those are things he's going to get back on track. No changes, though. Um, two, shooting guard. I'm going J.J. Starling. Expect a lot from the Baldwinsville kid. Copy what I have here? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Listen, this is someone who can score. Fourth, Notre Dame, 11.2 points per game. Third most amongst ACC freshmen. Made the 2023 ACC All-Freshman team as well. Has shown that he can become a big force in helping close out games. He showed that in South Bend last year. That's something this team struggled with, with the ball handling, with the scoring. That's something he can bring to this Syracuse team going into this year. Chris Bell, I'm going to expect more from him too at the three. Started a lot of games as a freshman. Benched for that two-game stretch, but rebounded well. I think he'll gel in every, well with everyone else and build on his nice freshman campaign. Benny Williams, we talked about it. A lot of the drama surrounding last year I think this team has moved past that I think he's over that he will start this year at the four shot nearly 45 percent from the floor and nearly 40 percent from beyond the arc again we talk about the lot lack of inconsistency the lack of consistency rather but I think one of the big things that is happening this year is that Judah talked about it earlier he's more hands-on Coach Adrian Autry is more hands-on with a lot of these guys and I think a lot of them just got thrown into the fire last year they're going to have a little bit more training wheels, and they're going to start the season. They're going to do really well. Um, but again, like you said, Naeem McLeod, big presence at center. If there's anybody who could fill the void left by Jesse Edwards leaving to West Virginia, it is McLeod. 7-4. Need I say more? It's funny. His career high in points was 16. That was against Syracuse back on February 8th. But guess what? This is someone who knows the ACC. And if there's anyone who can try and replace the void left by Jesse Edwards, as I said, it is McLeod. And I think he'll do it very quick. Not too worried about getting acclimated because, again, this is a young team. Everyone is getting acclimated right now. I think he'll fit in just perfectly with Adrian Autry and this new era of orange. Before we close out, let's briefly take a look at the schedules. What's your most important game for the women's side? Listen, I think there's a lot of important games here, but, of course, the things that always stick out to me, games like Notre Dame, games like Louisville, these are powers in the Atlantic Coast Conference and Syracuse really needs to show themselves against these teams. Again, some of the other teams that Syracuse will play, that big matchup last year against a ranked North Carolina team that they beat and upset, this is another opportunity to show itself.
Yep. Circling back to the men's game, no more home game with Duke this season, but there are some big ones later in the schedule in that ACC slate. Yeah, you know, let's go up a little bit. I think there's some interesting games here early for Syracuse. Um, talking about Georgetown, I always love seeing a game like that on the road in Washington, D.C. We'll see how they perform then. Georgetown's been playing with a lot. It'll be interesting to see how the Syracuse team plays. But there are some interesting teams on this list. Oregon, that trip to Sioux Falls is going to be a little bit weird, won't it be? Oh, well, I can't wait for that. Syracuse and Oregon at Sioux Falls, one of the biggest early season matchups of the season. And that just about does it for us here from the Carmelo K. Anthony Center on the Citrus TV Basketball Preview Show. Thanks to Carson Fowler for stepping in. And thank you to our entire production crew. That's Shilakasi Adele. I'm Jesse Cook, getting set for the new year.